So in this video, we're gonna show you guys a couple little tricks that involve uh, radiology, imaging, and how to tie it together with a physical exam, which is very important. So this was a horse that was referred for evaluation of a 209, um, or 109, I'm sorry, that was suspicious on oral exam and seemed to have some open pulps. So we'll show you what it looks like in the mouth. I'll put the endoscope in there and give you a quick look here so you can look at that. So here we have the 106, that's nice and normal, 206 is, not, or uh, 207, 106, sorry, is normal, 107 is totally normal, 108 looks nice and normal, and then we go to 109 and we can see how we have a palatal complicated fracture involving pulps 3 and number 5 and they're covered by granulation tissue. And then we also have pulp uh, number four here that's open. Pulps one and two look pretty normal. It's very important to always look at the buccal aspect and the lingual aspect of all teeth. So this is what it looks like orally, and that's the reason why he was referred in here. So our next step is to take a radiograph. So we'll show you here, we did a a lateral oblique dorsal to ventral radiograph and that actually looks pretty normal we'll zoom in a little bit here and show you what these roots look like but on the number nine here this actually looks pretty normal it might be a little bit hard to appreciate on a video but everything looks pretty good we can see a nice lamina dura uh, a lot of times people might be tempted to start their uh, stop at, at that point I mean but it's really important to do a palatal view and we'll show you guys how to do that and we've explained it in, in a couple other videos. Um, but this is very important on these types of cases because here if we look at the palatal root, uh, let me see if we can get it to focus here. There we go. You can see here that we have some lysis, maybe even a little cementoma and we have some definite abnormalities on the palatal root. And that actually makes sense because the palatal root is the one that tends to communicate more with pulps three, four, and five, which is what we saw in the oral exam. So don't be fooled by doing a lateral oblique radiograph, which is the most common view. So on the 109 here, the cassette would be here and the generator would be coming from this side. What that does is it highlights the two buccal roots, I'll show you. Upper teeth, maxillary cheek teeth have two buccal roots and one palatal root. So the 109 here would have two roots on the outside, one root on the inside, sitting like that, okay? So when we do the generator over here and the plate, the receiver is on this side, the two buccal roots get elevated and we can see them and the palatal root drops and gets overlapped on the two so we don't see the palatal root on that view. So what we have to do it's an open mouth, ventral to dorsal, palatal view. So what we do here is we actually open the mouth with a block. All dental radiographs should be taken with a block in the incisors to separate the cheek teeth. So we put this block in the mouth that holds the mouth open and then our generator stays on the same side but it goes ventral to dorsal and it shoots up. And when, when what we get here is that this single palatal root now all of a sudden because the beam is coming from this side that gets raised and the two buccal roots drop and we can see that and so that gave us the right information on this horse to, to give a diagnosis that we have a periapical abscess and that the tooth needs to be extracted if all the x-rays were normal we might have been able to do a more conservative approach um, so it's it's just important to figure out how to integrate all that stuff together and to be efficient in doing that process, this shouldn't take for uh, too long. This horse here, we've been working on him 20 minutes and we have a diagnosis and we already have our maxillary, maxillary nerve block in place. Um, and we're just doing the video while the nerve block is kicking in. So it should be fairly efficient. The other thing is, is just yesterday, I got a report from somebody that was recommended to have a tooth taken out under general anesthesia. 
with a cost of around 3500 at bare minimum with multiple repeated visits and high complication rate. That's an outdated procedure. So if anybody is telling you that you need to lay your horse down under general anesthesia, at least in North America, uh, where there's options, um, they're, they're, that you should not do that unless you're really prepared to incur a lot of extra unnecessary costs and a lot of extra unnecessary risks on your horse. These procedures can be done standing, especially on the molars that involve the sinuses. To me, it's way below the practice of care at this point in time to be recommending those types of surgeries. And I feel pretty passionate about it because I see the aftermath of those surgeries oftentimes and trying to uh, correct the complications. And it's a bad feeling because we're kind of powerless a little bit. We can help a lot of those horses, but it would have been a lot easier to avoid the problems in the first place. So.